We're headed for the grave of the great playwright and wit named Moliere. Rick, how can Moliere be buried here? He died in the 17th century, and Père Lachaise wasn't founded until the 19th century. Well, as you recall, when Père Lachaise was first started in 1804, it struggled financially. Moving the remains of Moliere to be reburied here was a publicity stunt. It gave instant prestige to the new cemetery. I bet Moliere was glad to be a marquee attraction. Moliere was the greatest French playwright of the 17th century, the age of Louis XIV. Moliere was born here in Paris. He was not of noble blood, but he had connections. He was the son of the man in charge of the king's furniture. Moliere was by now a very funny comedian. He cracked the king up. The king's brother was an even bigger fan. And just like that, Moliere was instantly famous. Soon he was writing, directing, and even starring in his own plays. Moliere's plays poked fun at the aristocrats of Louis XIV's court, the egotistical nobles, the hypocritical priests, and the quack doctors. By 1675, Moliere was in his fifties and in poor health. But the show had to go on. So one night, Moliere went on stage as the star of his latest comedy. It was called The Imaginary Invalid. Moliere's role was as the title character, a hypochondriac. So Moliere, in character, faked a few coughs. The audience loved it. But as the play went on, Moliere got sicker and sicker, and his fake coughs turned to real coughs. The crowd didn't know the difference. He had them rolling in the aisles. Moliere was the ultimate trooper, and he carried on to the final scene. He delivered his final line and then collapsed on stage, coughing up blood. The audience thought it was all part of the act, and they roared hysterically. And so Moliere died. I love Moliere's quote about death. We die only once, he said. Yes, and for such a long time. On the left is a grave that's often littered with metro tickets. This is the grave of Gilbert Morard, the father of the Paris metro. If you appreciate the metro, add a spent metro ticket to the pile left here by other fans. Jim Morrison Morrison was a mere pop star, but he'd told his friends that he wanted to be buried in Père Lachaise among the great poets and artists. So after he died, Jim's friends approached Père Lachaise. At first, the director absolutely refused to admit such a notorious rock and roller. Then they mentioned that Jim was also a writer. A writer, said the director, and he found a spot. This is perhaps the most visited tomb in the cemetery. The lead singer for the popular band from the 1960s called The Doors. The band was named for the doors of perception that their music was meant to open for the listener. They made it big with hits like Light My Fire. And I love the cup of you know fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. They also did the song, Hello, I Love You. Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? And Touch Me. Come on, come on, come on, come on now, touch me, babe. Easy, rock star. We are in a cemetery. Oops. Jim Morrison became notorious for his illicit drug use and for his performances. He was even arrested for doing things on stage that authorities considered obscene. Check out the scene around the grave. Yeah, there's usually a crowd of Morrison faithful here. You may see graffiti where fans write references to the Doors songs. Things like, You Still Light My Fire. Or, Ring My Bell at the Dead Rock Star Hotel. Well, by the 1970s, the Doors were one of the biggest acts in the world. But they were also burned out. Morrison needed a break. He came to Paris. When he arrived in the winter of 1971, he was famous, loved, and hated. He was also an alcoholic. Paris was to be his chance to leave celebrity behind, get healthy, and get serious about what he always wanted to be, a writer. He took an assumed name and moved into a nondescript apartment. He visited the homes of famous writers and jammed with street musicians. He also drank a lot and took other drugs. He gained weight and his health kept declining, and then... In the wee hours of July 3rd, Jim Morrison died. It happened in his apartment, in the bathtub, 
The official cause was a heart attack, but more likely it was from an overdose of heroin. Any police investigation was thwarted by Morrison's fellow drug addicts, thus leading to the wild rumors that he may not have even died. Nevertheless, this is the end, my only friend, the end. Jim was only 27. That statue remembers a man named Casimir Perrier. He was the shortest-serving French president ever, only six months. But he's still got a big monument. Tiptoe through the tombstone. Rick? Come tiptoe through the tombstones with me. <sighs> Frederick Chopin. The fresh-cut flowers and geraniums on the gravestone speak volumes about the emotional staying power of Chopin's music. Chopin still connects with romantic souls across the centuries. His tomb is topped with the statue of a muse. She once inspired Chopin, but now she's left mourning over his tragic death. A carved relief shows Chopin in profile. It captures the delicate features of this sensitive artist. Chopin was only 21 when he arrived in Paris in the 1830s. He was not French, but Polish. In fact, Chopin never quite mastered the French language. I can relate. Nevertheless, Chopin fell in love with Paris. He never again returned to his homeland. Chopin composed nearly 200 pieces, almost all for the piano. Chopin developed tuberculosis. Chopin was only 39 years old when he died. Chopin's funeral was held here in Paris, in the Madeleine Church. As they carried his casket, the organist played what is perhaps Chopin's most famous piece, the Funeral March. Baron George Eugene Hausmann Love him or hate him, Baron Haussmann made Paris into the city we see today. Back in the 1850s, Paris was still a dirty city of narrow medieval lanes. Haussmann, a brilliant engineer, transformed Paris into a city of broad boulevards lined with grand five-story buildings. Haussmann oversaw the entire operation. For decades, Paris was a construction zone. They renovated sewers, bridges, and water systems. Haussmann created parks and public squares. On the other hand, many charming historic buildings were torn down. Haussmann's grand scheme impacted 60% of Paris. Wow. How did he finance it all? Well, that's what the next government wanted to know. They investigated him and essentially told him, you're fired. Giacchino Rossini. Take that. Yes, it's the William Tell Overture. Also known as the Lone Ranger theme. Rossini was the composer of that and lots of other well-known music. Rossini was Italian, but in 1823 he moved to what was becoming the center of European culture, Paris. Rossini's comic operas were an immediate hit in the City of Light. But Rossini's sepulchre though it's impressive, is empty. You're right. Years later, his remains were moved to Florence. As the inscription on the grave says, Here lies Colette. Colette is France's most honored female writer. She led an unconventional life. She was married three times. She was also linked romantically with other women. She wrote about her relationships in novels that were thinly veiled tales from her own life. Her first novels were about the misadventures of a naughty teenager named Claudine. In her thirties, Colette went on to a second career as a music hall performer. She scandalized Paris twice, once by kissing her female lover on stage and once by baring her breasts. As our tour nears its end... What lies beyond this tour? And your answer? The rest of Paris. Go in peace. <laughs>